known as Diamond Dave. And let's go into the weekend stock market talk for 5 28 2022. Let's get right into it. SP 500 index seasonality. What we're looking at is we normally go into June, um, not really bullish, but also not really bearish. To me, it's also kind of almost like a consolidation. It could be very choppy, but on a yearly charter, probably like daily consolidation, what people call barcoding. And then we normally look for a sell off in late June to kind of set us up for a run from July, August, September, getting ready to go into the fourth quarter. So we're at the end, pretty much the end of uh, the second quarter. We're at the midpoint of the year. We get another 90 days out of the way, and then we're going into the end of the year. So the year pretty much is pretty much over because we're at the halfway point. And that's kind of what we want to anticipate. Looking at the, uh, the weekly economic calendar, we know there's nothing coming out on Monday. A national home price index year over year, national home price index year over year. Those are going to be interesting numbers. However, uh, we still know that we're dealing with limited inventory. Therefore, uh, any number that is going to be weaker, it's not going to be a big deal because there's not a lot of inventory on the market. Therefore, even though um, prices on homes may decrease a little bit, lack of inventory to me is going to kind of sustain those prices a little bit. Consumer confidence index. Then we're going to go into uh, job openings. The beige book, everybody kind of knows what that is. Motor vehicle sales is going to be an interesting number. Thursday, the jobless claims are going to be very interesting. We're going to look at factory orders. And then what we're going to look for on um, Friday is non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, and labor force participation 25 to 54. Not a lot of really big numbers because we had the PCE last week. So I don't think it's anything on these economic um, calendar is going to really move the market next week. Now we're going to go into our earnings. So earnings pretty much is over. We're getting ready to end our earnings season. Salesforce, Digital Turbine, ChargePoint, JOYY, uh, Gambling.com, GameStop, Chewy, HP, UPath, Weibo, Hormel Foods, Toro, Duluth Trading, CrowdStrike, Lulamon, Asana, Zoomies, Lands In. Not a really, really strong earning week. Not a weak one, but not a strong one. I want to see what Hormel's has to talk about. Definitely want to see what, what GameStop is probably going to not report. Lulamon is going to be really interesting because they're a really big um, consumer discretionary brand. Want to see if they, they're very much, uh, their mode is very much based around their brand. And they had a really, really strong run during the pandemic, and they've lost a lot of value, a lot of market cap as a result after because the pandemic pretty much is over. Want to kind of see how they report and what their uh, what their guidance is going to be. Now, let's go into the charts. We're looking at the spy. We're looking at the one year on daily candles. And what we see that we talked about before, this was our support. We went under it. It became our resistance. We pushed past it and we also passed the other resistance. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing that I'm kind of standing out is it's not a lot of really, really strong volume on the move up. It's decent, but it's not really out of the way, right? So we're seeing 91, 82, uh, 84. What I want to find out and need to kind of show over the next two weeks, is this really much, is this pretty much rebalancing because the end of month rebalancing or uh, are we going into a, a little bit of a relief rally or have we maybe possibly uh, this market is maybe bottomed out and now we're looking to move back in. So let's look at it on the weeklies. Maybe we hit our bottom here and maybe the market is getting ready to push back up. We haven't gotten to the COVID point of the, around the 300s, but maybe because we have a full green week and we had pretty much one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight weeks of selling, maybe we've hit uh, a, a, you know, a reversal. But we also saw this here where this was a green week this is a green week. This is a green week. And then we sold right back down under that. So really what I'm looking at is this 432 mark. If we push up past the 432, uh, especially if we do it in the next two weeks, to me, that's a reversal. But we just got to kind of see how it plays out. Really quickly, uh, and I don't want to sidetrack it, is I kind of think all the de-risking has been done in the market. Uh, everything has been factored in. Everybody knows that the Fed is getting ready to unwind unwind or their uh We'll say, yeah, they're getting ready to unwind their balance sheet starting on the first. 
Um, to my opinion, that's been factored in. Um, the rates have been factored in. The rising rates have been factored in. Unless the Fed comes out to me with something that is going to be outside of what people anticipate them doing, I don't see where this bearish sentiment is really going to come from. Doesn't mean it won't happen. I'm just trying to figure out what's going to create it unless people still feel like the market is overvalued. Now, if they feel like the market is overvalued and it's too expensive, they'll just keep selling it. However, to me, all these mitigating factors, all these externalities have already been factored into the prices of a lot of these companies. So then therefore, we may see that where they just start to trade sideways or trade back up. But I'm not yet seeing a narrative to keep this thing continuing to sell off. I just don't see it. It doesn't mean it's not there. It means I don't see it. Looking at the QQQ, the same thing, right? This was a support. We move, I'm sorry. This was the support. We moved up under it. It became the resistance. We moved past it and almost hit this next resistance line. Similar issue, lower resistance. I'm sorry, lower volume on the move up. Nice volume on the Friday move up. Uh, the Thursday was around, what, 59 million? 63, 73 on the sell-off. This was that Friday sell-off, I believe. Um, I'm sorry. This was a sell-off. And then it started moving back up, but I'm not seeing like really, really bullish volume on it. Let's go to the uh, the weeklies on the one year. Let me zoom out a little bit. And very similar, right? So this is the pandemic. And we're essentially about right here. And to me, I, I, the same thing. I will look for this thing really to start moving up. And, you know, because we sold off so strongly here, we may retrace back here. You know, we may retrace all the way back and then figure out what direction we're going to go into. Because like I said, I just think everything's been factored in now. Unless the Fed comes out or some economic data comes out that's really going to scare people. I think a recession has been factored in. I think the rates have been factored in. I think uh, the money wanted the balance sheet has all been factored in. And a lot of these tech companies have a lot of them have gotten back to their their pre pandemic price. Therefore, I don't see anywhere the market can really move except back up. Uh, we got CPI data coming out in two, three weeks. But to me, that's going to be weaker because the uh, inflation kind of subsided. I think the next PCR report that's coming after the one that we're getting ready to see in the next few weeks is going to be worse. Therefore, I'm not really seeing a narrative to where it's going to cause the market to sell off, like I said before, unless people still think this thing is still overpriced or overvalued based on how you define it. Therefore, I would tell people, uh, make sure you manage your risk. Make sure you kind of understand what side of the trend that you're on. And I would really encourage you to not jump on a bandwagon or something if you don't really have a really thorough explanation of your own as to why you're doing it. As opposed to what well, this person on YouTube said it, that may not be the right answer, right? Because I just, I think both sides of the market over time can get exhausted. And this is just a lot of selling. Now, if this would have happened in three weeks, I would be like, it can keep going. I just think it might be exhausted, right? The Bears have had such a great run. It might just be time to give the ball to somebody else. But let's see how it plays out. We're going into a short week for the holiday and that's also going to be the start of a new month. We know this month historically is bullish. However, that doesn't mean it has to be. So let's just see how it plays out. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, I'll talk to you later.